everybody knows how big the job is for Eric Ten Hag, right? No one's under any illusion that he's going to come in, wave that magic wand, that Dutch wand, and it's all going to be fixed. Plenty of managers post Fergie have failed. And in this video, I want to run through 10 mistakes that I think Ten Hag simply has to avoid if he's going to be successful as Manchester United manager. Mistakes that I think previous managers have made that he can learn from and he simply cannot afford to repeat. I'll run through this list. What well, I think is a decent list. You can let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do. And if you do, by the end of the video, enjoy this. Please consider subscribing to United People's TV. I'd love to have you as part of the community. I'd love to have you on board here for videos like this. But let's get into it. And for me, number one on this list, standout number one, is letting players have control. That is a mistake that he has to avoid. It's a mistake which has tarnished Manchester United for a long, long time now. It really has taken over at the club. I almost feel like I'm going on about it a little bit too much. But because you, you see so many different examples and the Jesse Lingard situation recently is, is just the latest example of it. But Paul Pogba, um, Alexis Sanchez, uh, gee, the, the list goes on and on and on of players that were on too, inflated wages, uh, that had too much control and, and self-inflated importance. And it's taken over. Fergie was all about, always about control, control, control. And it was always about making sure that Manchester United maintained that control. We've lost that, but that has to change. And for me, that's the fundamental thing that he cannot afford to get wrong at United if he's going to succeed. That's number one on my list. Number two on my list is letting the board micromanage. I think this is a thing that's happened at United for quite a long time now. Um, it's the sort of like vote by committee type thing. And that means that you've got everybody with their fingers in all the pies and that's what's delayed a lot of decision-making at Manchester United for a long time because it has to go up to Richard Arnold. Then it has to go up to, uh, well, previously Matt Judge. It has to go up to Joel Glazer before anything can get ticked off. I think that's something that Ten Hag has really argued for. That's part of his contract that he really pushed. And I think it's absolutely crucial that he gets that and gets it right because if he, if, if he's, if he allows himself to be micromanaged, United will dither, will miss targets, will will delay things, will will do things far too slowly, and it just won't work for him at Manchester United. So the board has to stay out of it, and he has to keep the board out of it. I, and I I trust him to do that. He strikes me as a manager that really is going to be sort of not doing it in an angry fashion, but he certainly won't let the board manage him in the same way that others have previously. That's why I think anyway. And number three, this might be number one on your list. Bad recruitment, man. Bad recruitment simply has to be avoided at Manchester United. Angel Di Maria, probably the best example of it. The amount of money we spent on him, the fact that he got shipped out the next summer, the fact that Van Hal never really wanted him. And it was just like a, a club signing more than anything else. The bad recruitment has been a core part of what we've got wrong. We shouldn't be in this position having spent a billion. We should have a far, far better squad. Instead, we're going into the summer looking at a genuine full-scale rebuild. Probably the biggest we've had so uh, so far because of all the contracts that are expiring at the same time. Get the recruitment right this summer and everything can kick off to a great start. Get the recruitment wrong and it will put him on a back foot straight away. And I, that is absolutely a fundamental thing that he cannot get wrong. I don't think he will get wrong, but other managers have. I mean, Solskjaer, look at the three signings he made now. He made, what was it? Maguire, Wambasaka, and Dan, Dan James. Dan James has been sold. Aaron Maguire looks like he should be sold. And same with Wambasaka. Clearly, it wasn't right, and it has to, it has to get fixed. But players aside, board aside, I think one major thing that a lot of coaches have done wrong at Manchester, a lot of coaches, a lot of managers have done wrong at United is they've had the wrong coaches alongside them. You saw David Moyes; he got rid of everybody before he came in. Oh, I know it all. That didn't work out. Jose Van Hal, I can't even remember who his bloody assistants were. And Jose Mourinho obviously had Rui Farrier. I think he probably had who he wanted in there and then Rui Farrier left and it was kind of the beginning of the end for him really, wasn't it? And then all you're going to Solskjaer brought in um, Mike Phelan and I thought that was right at the beginning but then eventually wrong. For, for Ten Hag to be able to get his identity and his style and his philosophy truly embedded inside this Manchester United team, he needs the right support network around him. Simple as that. From a board level and also from a coaching level. Mitchell van der Gag, we're still not hearing confirmation on whether he's coming in or not but he's pretty much... We know he is. We don't know who the second coach is going to be. That like Steve McLaren or Van Persie, although it's not probably not going to be Van Persie either. 
the the Dutch coach with a United link. He needs the right people around him inside that training ground because ultimately the players have not been doing well enough, anywhere near well enough at the training ground. So he needs those players and those coaches to make it all work in unison. And for me, that's a mistake he cannot avoid to make. Don't get those appointments wrong, man. I don't think he will. But this is just this is just what I feel as, as a fan going into the next few months, just the things that I don't want to see Ten Hag do. And one thing I absolutely don't want to see him do, and I don't think he will do, but fuck the press, man. They are going to try everything possible to take Ten Hag out. The British press will not help Ten Hag. They will want him to fail. And he will know that. As I said, he's a very smart and intellectual person. And I don't think he will let the press manipulate him. But try not to listen to it too much because there's going to be such a... Things are different, man. The scale of everything changes from Ajax to Manchester United. And maybe he thinks he... And not that I'm trying to undermine him, but I just want him to... He's not going to watch this video, so he won't get prepared by watching this video. But I, I hope he's preparing himself for that big step up because the press intensity and the scrutiny, it will get significantly worse. It will get significantly harder. And if he takes any of that on board, could be an issue. I don't think he will. As I said, that's, a, that's my caveat for these 10 mistakes. I'm not here saying that Ten Hag's going to make any of these mistakes. These are just things that I'll, I'll be happy to see him not get wrong, if you know what I mean. And one that I think is pretty important on this one is... Harry Maguire staying on as captain. He's got to set the right tone inside this squad from day one. Now, Harry Maguire was given the captain, given the armband by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer straight away at Manchester United, from, if I'm not mistaken. It was a mistake. We had to earn that armband. Now, Bruno Fernandes will probably be the captain, but he still has to improve. Ronaldo's, Ronaldo, if he was staying probably longer from one more year, he would probably be main captain. He has to get that right. The captain is the person who will set the tone on the pitch for Ten Hag's new United. And it can't just stay on Harry Maguire's arm. Not in my opinion anyway. Now, Maguire may improve. I've, I've no doubt that if Maguire does stay, he probably would improve. I still very much question whether he would actually suit the high line that Ten Hag's going to play. In fact, I'd say he just won't. But I think he'll be given a chance. Saying that though, that should not be with the armband. That has to be changed. And if that isn't changed, it's setting the wrong tone of acceptance of standards straight away. And I don't want to see that. Now, something I think really happened quite a lot, especially on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, was a real stubbornness to tactics. Now, if we look here, this is the team that um, Ten Hag uses at Ajax mainly. The 4-2-3-1. He's got his philosophy and he's got his style. But something, that having watched Ajax, having spoken to a few Ajax fans as well, He's not necessarily stubborn to, I mean, tactics are tactics, right? That might be what Ajax set up as 4-2-3-1 when, when kickoff happens. But the team's very fluid. The team does change. And if things aren't working, because it won't work every week. It absolutely won't work every week. He has to have a, a degree of flexibility to him. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer never had that. And a lot of these mistakes, maybe I'm associating more with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer than anybody else because it's been our most recent manager, which I think is kind of fair enough. He can't have that stubbornness to his tactic. He obviously will have that stubbornness to his own. That's why his philosophy is so embedded inside him. But if it's not working, he has to have an ability to be able to, to switch it up. And that's why someone like Halle has kind of proven that. It's shown a different side to Ten Hag's style that he can do. So I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. But I definitely think that was a big downfall of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. As was this. This was a massive, massive problem for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was choosing players by name and not by form. So often, Solskjaer just remained stubborn to choosing individuals um, and it hindered the team and it hindered the performances. And despite the form being out the window, he would still continue to play those players. And it hurt Manchester United. Again, it undermined uh, the standards because if a player's bang out of form, he should be benched, and you should, maybe the squad wasn't deep enough to replace him. I think that's a, I think he probably was, eh, ish. He can't afford to make that mistake. It's all about choosing players on form. If someone's playing wicked, put him in the team. Bad, out of the team. It's about getting those standards back. And by only playing players on form instead of simply the name on the back of their shirt, that will make a big difference. Now, this might not affect. Us too much season, uh, sorry, uh, us, too, us too much next season, depending on what competitions we're in. But given that we're getting back towards the Champions League and that's the ultimate aim, he has to be able to rotate his squad 
definitely better than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did or Jose Mourinho did. Jose was the king of playing his strongest 11s in the cup games. He has to be able to trust his squad. It's the thing you see with Liverpool. Like, Luis Diaz has come in. Wow, what, what an impact he's made. The 2-0 down against Villarreal. Who comes off the bench and changes it? It's because every player has is empowered to feel like they are a significant part of that team. If you just leave your fringe players and you leave them out, when you call upon them, they're going to be like, their mentality is not going to be completely correct. And again, Ten Hag has coached for years and years and years, and I'm sure he knows all of this. But this is just from my fan perspective, the things that I've seen, mistakes that I think that previous managers, mainly Solskjaer, has made that I don't really want him to befall the same sort of fate. And this one kind of goes without saying, but please don't be shit. <laughs> please don't be shit. I'm going to get rid of that off the screen, but I've got him there as Heisenberg. And uh, I don't know. I, I I really, really want Eric Ten Hag to succeed. I really, deep in my gut, feel that he's more likely to succeed than any manager prior to him post-Fergie. I really feel like the club is making the right moves behind the scenes. I now want to see him bring in the right coaches. I want to see him bring in the right players. And I want to see the pieces start to fall into place but that's a list of things a list of mistakes that i don't want to see eric ten Hag repeat that other mis other managers made at manchester united you can let me know what you think about that list are there any other mistakes you think that he cannot avoid to make that i haven't mentioned you can let me know in the comments below as you always do but please if you did enjoy the video and said so let's start drop a like on it and subscribe to united people's tv you let me know what you think about this this list though